off the new year with an update about Jefferson City. So I'm thrilled to be here and present the uh, vision for Jefferson City along with the Mayor's New Year's resolution. So we'll start off with what are the three things that the Mayor resolves to do this year? So about the same thing, no, I didn't bring More slides. selfies. More selfies? <laughs> oh, I didn't think of that. That's such a good one. Actually, drink more water, get more sleep, and work on the mayor's blog. But get more selfies would have been right up there. So, but actually, what are the real resolutions for Jefferson City, not just the personal ones? So there are three big things that we're working on. MSP redevelopment, bringing Capitol Avenue back, and then the Bicentennial Bridge to the riverfront. And really, with Capitol Avenue, we've always been working on redevelopment and revitalization, but now it's bringing it back after the tornado. So those are three things that are... Uh, on the mayor's New Year's resolution for Jefferson City. But before I get into those, I'll get into all three of those in depth today. But I know there's what's on everybody's mind, and you're going to ask me, so I'll just say it anyway. You're going to want to know what's going on with right, the building at 200. I know what you're going to ask me, what's going on with that. So let me just take care of it now, because I don't believe after that, right? That's all you want to know. So we are working on that. We're going to decide that at the next city council meeting. So you're familiar with the building that's at 200 East High, so... <laughs> Penitentiary in Pennsylvania, you can even have 
have weddings there, you can even get married. So, I mean, there are things that can be done at prisons that I'm telling you having a penitentiary is really a big deal. Um, I know that you know, the ball chain and everything else, I mean, all these things you can probably really. Uh, anyway, so uh, back to how crazy that is. But our penitentiary has grown significantly in visitors. We started with 3,000 visitors in 2009, and then we were over 33,000 visitors. They had to stop tours after the tornado, but they resumed in October and November of this year, and they stopped for the winter. But they have really taken off, and they've shown exponential growth over the years. Eastern state of Pennsylvania has over 300,000 visitors. Like I said, the one where you can get married. So we have more than Eastern state does because we have a state capital within a mile of this prison, and we have a river within a view of the prison. So what we have is even greater than what these other historic penitentiaries have. So the potential here is huge. So we hope to take this and grow with it. So right now, what are we going to do with the prison redevelopment? We have right now two proposals on the table. So I'm going to share just a brief outline of the two proposals. So we have uh, this proposal here shows a potential for uh, soccer fields at the state penitentiary site. And the land here on the bottom is the land that we own. There's pieces of this that are not necessarily in the uh, city conveyed area, but we did ask developers to kind of think big and think broad and kind of give us their biggest and best idea, and then we're going to take that and we'll uh, be able to almost give us a menu of what you want and we'll choose what works best here. So this is one option with soccer fields. The other one I don't have shown, their option B was to have a park rather than soccer fields. And as part of this, they proposed doing a convention center off-site, and this is next to the St. Mary's site. So they're showing the St. Mary's Hotel and then having the conference center built next to that hotel. So they show sports fields, soccer fields, or a park, and a convention center off-site. The next proposer, and this is the farmers, and a farmers group, the next proposal is the Chesterfield group, and they have built the Broadway Hotel in downtown Columbia along with the Hampton near the zoo campus. This group, and I, when I say group, there's many, many partners uh, actually for each of these groups. But this particular group has proposed putting a conference center there on site. You can see it there at, on the far uh, left, uh, which is actually where Housing Unit 5 currently stands. So they propose removing Housing Unit 5, which is currently not used for tours and not necessarily historic and has sustained some damage from the tornado anyway, and putting it there. And then it would be a location right next to the most historic housing unit here, which is A Hall. So to kind of give you some perspective of where that is on the site. And they took a, a, an approach that's more following the master plan of potential retail, potential housing, potential uh, development, a hotel and conference center on site like the original master plan contemplates having. So um, they also have the, uh, the roadway coming through and connecting there at Lafayette like the original master plan also uh, kind of outlines. So again, this also uses some land that is not currently in the city conveyed, conveyed portion. So a lot of this is going to depend on, uh, on the state working with us on both proposals, which they have been for quite some time. And then this shows just more of a closer up of what the proposed hotel and conference center could look like. And they propose putting it in this site because of the river view, of course, taking advantage of the amazing view. And, and um, so that's why you can see the river behind this proposed hotel. So, and they mentioned the rooftop bar, like what they have at their hotel in Columbia, to give you kind of some local perspective of what that would be. So, we have two proposals on the table. So, the next steps are we're going to be meeting with our, it's our Missouri State Penitentiary Community Partners, which is city, state, county, CBB, and city, state, county, CBB, and chamber. <laughs> 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 So the five partners, it's a, it's a large group, but it needs to be because it's a lot of collaboration to get us where we are right now. So we've been meeting for quite some time, and, and we're just really thankful to have these two great developers on the table with uh, potential redevelopment for the penitentiary. We did kind of open it up and show the public these plans. This is somewhat unusual when you're in the negotiation and, and the stage that we're at right now because there's still a lot to be determined with cost and, and different parts of this proposal. So it's unusual that we are as open and showing as much of this publicly as we are, but we want to do that because this is such a, 
uh, desired project. It has been for so many years. So we want to have it as public as possible in the process while also understanding that we're in a big negotiation project as well. So uh, these were at an open house that we had that people could come, they could look at these proposals, they could talk in person with the developers and give us some preliminary feedback on, on what they thought about these. So we're going to take that into account as we continue to meet and um, I would anticipate we should be meeting here uh, very shortly where we will be getting our committee together to work through the proposals. Where we're at is we looked at both of them, took some input, had some questions, have asked them of both developers and they'll come back to us with their uh, answers and we'll decide how to proceed as far as selecting a developer and then going down that path to hopefully get, not hopefully, to get prison redevelopment finally. So very exciting time. So the prison is really important to us. There's a little tour bus there that we know that people are coming to tour it. Um, the most historic building on the site is A Hall, the, uh, the one that I showed you where that was earlier. So A Hall is where everybody goes for the tour. So this is A Hall before the tornado. And this is A Hall after the tornado. So I'll go back and show you. There's A Hall before with the ceiling attack, and there it is after. So now the roof has been completely removed because, as you can see, it was just hanging there. So now the most urgent need out of all of the historic buildings in MSP is to put a new roof on A Hall. So right now it's completely removed roof. It's a state owned building, but we're working with the state, so is the CBB. We're all trying to come together to find a solution. Uh, the state is, is uh, currently trying to figure out what it would cost to replace the roof. That, that is the most urgent need right now. Uh, and talking about the CBB, they have invested significantly. Uh, all their tour revenue goes back into MSP and, and fixing these buildings anyway. They've invested quite a bit of their uh, resources back into repairs so that we can keep the site going uh, for the future. So still working through that, but, um, but we realize that that is probably the most significant need. And then I have up here this slide just to show you about Missouri Pin Tours. If you haven't taken a tour, I would encourage you to. Something exciting for 2020 that we haven't <coughs> seen yet is the buried cell project. So they're unearthing these buried cells from the 1800s that are going to be an extremely uh, unique attraction. So that's the neat thing about the tours. If you've already taken one, you can always take another one. It's going to be different than, than it was before. And, and it's great that they're adding new things onto these tours. And this slide I put in here to show you what is the conveyance area. What does the city own? So we own the area in red. We own a, a little over 20 acres there. And although I, I think that I tend to color outside the lines a little bit, and you can see that with both of those proposals, they are a little bit outside of those red lines. And I think the tornado has also kind of got us thinking a little bit broader. We originally chose this just to, to get movement facilitated on getting this property uh, redeveloped. So wasn't so much of really where the lines are, but just that we're working together with the state. So you can see all the historic buildings are still in the area owned by the state. This is the portion owned by the state. So anything in red is what's owned by the city. And then to the east, there's still 95 acres to the east, which ends up uh, going towards Riverside Park. And you see we have two, there are two state office buildings, State Health Lab and DNR, that were also the original master plan. So if you kind of look where those state buildings are, and then you look now, this is the original master plan. So you can see those are the two that have been built. The master plan is just a concept, very similar to what our proposals are. It's a concept, but these are things that we could end up seeing there uh, on the site. So this is, this is what it really looks like today. This is the master plan, and now we have two proposals before us. And for those of you that don't believe we have the land, we do, and there it is right there with Governor Parsons' signature on it, and it's framed and hanging in the mayor's office. Everybody says, do you really have the deed to the property? Yes, we do. And then this is just a view from uh, MSP because the river view is something that is somewhat lost in Jefferson City unless you're fortunate enough to live along the river bluff or drive in and out across the bridge. You don't always see what an amazing view that we have here in the capital city. So this is a, a great shot of Bill Plank looking out the window. I think he had already determined that's the room he wanted, but I think that should be the mayor's uh, office right there. Uh, but it just shows you what, what an amazing uh, view that we have. And so we're looking forward to taking advantage of that, that river view with prison redevelopment. And the next topic on the mayor's New Year's resolution is Capitol Avenue. So I'm throwing this out there. If you're not already a member of Historic City of Jefferson, I would encourage you to join. It's very inexpensive to join as an individual or a family or business membership. 
Historic City of Jefferson is not affiliated with the City of Jefferson. It's a totally different uh, organization, but it's very significant when it comes to the history of our city. Uh, they have purchased a property on Capitol Avenue, and they're very vital to the uh, redevelopment and revitalization. So, especially after the tornado, even if you're if you're not a member, I would encourage you to do so just to support the active work that they're doing to uh, support historic preservation in our community. I think you're on the board, aren't you, Dan? Yes. Okay, so Dan's been on the Thanks board. Talk the to him. <laughs> Talk to Dan afterwards if you're not a member, and he'll, he'll make sure you are. So here's Capitol Avenue. In better days, when we were doing the original uh, renovation, this was a big streetscape project, the city and county joint sales tax project. Sales tax project. And then here we are at the ribbon cutting. We're all smiling because we're just so happy that you know, Capitol Avenue, look how great it looks. And and then you look at this, but actually, wait a minute, this is not after the tornado, this is 2015. <laughs> look at that, the date right there on the bottom. So Capitol Avenue's been a challenge for many years, and most of these properties are owned by a single property owner, most of them are owned by Barbara Bush, or not all, but most. So we went through this process starting in 2015 of uh, declaring the area of light and doing the blight study and going through all of that, you might say, why do you want a blight study? You have to in order to get to the end result of eminent domain. And now we're finally having success with that. So that's 2015. This is 2015. Actually, this home is in significantly worse shape now. If you know what it looks like today, it's even worse. Um, so here's one of our success stories. This is the Standish House at Jackson and Capitol Avenue. And they do have a blog. If you don't follow their blog, you should look at it. Uh, it's called Outstandish that it's renovation of the Standish house. And a young couple has purchased this and they're renovating this house. So one house at a time, this is coming back. Um, and this house here, the Parsons house, is believed to be the oldest house in Jefferson City. And speaking of historic city of Jefferson, they just purchased this house. So I'm very excited to see what's going to happen there and that's at the corner of Jackson. And if you want to see what other properties are available for redevelopment, just to, to know that list, it's on the Housing Authority website, which is jchamo.org. The Housing Authority has been a great partner in this redevelopment process. So right now, the one that's the really sought after one is Ivy Terrace. That's the big red, the big grand looking red building that's there on Capitol Avenue on the corner. And that house is actually for sale now. It's actually available. So the Housing Authority is taking uh, proposals, and those are due in January. They had a couple of open houses. You might have had a chance to actually go through Ivy Terrace and see it. So really excited to see what is going to happen on Capitol Avenue, because despite the fact that so many homes were lost, we have an opportunity now to rebuild. There's also yard signs that show which homes are available um, on Capitol Avenue. So next time you drive down, pay attention, you can see which houses are available for redevelopment. So if you know contractors or people who are interested, definitely make sure they're aware of that. So now riverfront access, the third thing. So we are working on the Bicentennial Bridge to Adrian's Island, and it's still projected to be completed in 2021 in time for the state's bicentennial, which is why it's called the Bicentennial Bridge. So why do we need a bridge? Because the only way to get to Adrian's Island is by boat. And although that was really fun to do that, it's, it's more fun if you can actually get there a little bit easier than that. So here is a picture of Adrian's Island for those of you that don't know it exists and think it's the size of this room. It's actually a significant area. It's almost a mile long. It starts at the Capitol and ends at the prison. And here's an early on concept. It's just to give you an idea of how and where it is. It's behind the Capitol. It would go across. Uh, it would be a significant bridge that would be about uh, 13 feet wide or so. So it's, it's a significant biking and walking path, not for vehicular traffic, but something that you could walk to the riverfront. So over the, the railroad tracks, it needs to be caged. Originally, there's some concept of, of rail cars, but that would hinder the view a bit, and we do feel that the view is the best thing you know, that we have here, too, that people want to enjoy the view. So we're working through concepts that might uh, enhance the view a bit more than that would. This shows you where the bridge would start. So it's behind the Veterans Memorial and the Senate, in between that and the Senate garage. So next time you're at the Capitol, you can start there and then you look across the way and you can see what, what this is going to look like. So we walk, you'll get to walk over these eight railroad tracks and you'll have a view of the Capitol that's really amazing. So it starts at the Capitol, it ends at the penitentiary. This is where Adrian's Island ends. So I bring the master plan back to show you that on the top there is a planned um, marina in the original master plan. So perhaps as we go through Christmas development, we'll be able to connect the river on that side as well. 
And this is just a view. I put that up there just to show you what Adrian's Island looks like because it is very thick forested trees. It is uh, definitely an amazing park-like setting. So those are my New Year's resolutions. I want to do a little bit of recap of 2019. So I was definitely ready to say bye to 2019. I don't know if some of you might have felt the same. But there were some good things we did in 2019. We started off in January with Lieutenant Governor Kehoe and went to Pearl Harbor. This is the USS Missouri battleship. And we were very fortunate at the time we had the battleship Missouri and the USS Missouri submarine and the USS Jefferson City submarine all stationed there. This is the 75th anniversary of the commissioning. And actually this year is the anniversary of the signing of the treaty that ended the war. So that's actually gonna be a big celebration, I believe in uh, August or September of this year. So uh, it was exciting to go and connect with with the USS Missouri. And we have the USS Jefferson City um, Committee that, that works very closely with our, our sailors there. Another highlight of 2019 was visiting our partner city in Minchburg, Germany. That's the mayor of Minchburg, Christian Zuber. And a small group of us went to visit. And I bring this up because we're going back again in 2020. So if anybody's interested, I would encourage you to come along on that trip. And there's Lieutenant David Williams that came with us. And I highlight this slide of the American flag. They were so very welcoming to us. And here we are, for us to go in the parade. It's a lot of fun, and it's great to connect to our heritage. And uh, they drink a lot of beer, so I'm uh, just telling you. So now let's look at Hello 2020. So what's going to happen this year? So this is a year of rebuilding Jefferson City. We will have to uh, build a new airport terminal. I'll show you some slides on that. We're going to have housing, of course, with the tornado taking out a lot of housing in Jefferson City. That's a big topic, and working together to get housing here. The Mayor's Blitz Build, if you haven't heard about that, Habitat for Humanity is working on a significant amount of building this year because of the tornado. And working with businesses on property tax issues after disasters. If any municipalities <coughs> were affected, you know that if your building is affected by a natural disaster, you cannot apply for a property tax waiver. So you still pay the same property tax. Residential can apply for a waiver, uh, commercial cannot. So businesses that may be a concrete slab still have to pay their entire property tax this year. And I think that is unfortunate and it's wrong and we should work together to encourage our businesses and property to, uh, to make it. If you saw Holly, Holly's quote who owned Avenue HQ, she said, although it's, it's definitely uh, significant for residential, you know, commercial doesn't survive. We're the ones that are making the money so people can, ha people can have their house. So the perspective of, of allowing commercial properties to take advantage of this property tax um, is a big deal, but it's a state issue. So we're working with our state legislators currently and hoping for legislation, uh, although legislation has come up in the past for that and failed. So I think in Jefferson City, we can really show that there is a need for that. So I want to touch briefly on the terminal. The airport is up and running for anyone that thinks it's not because you hear in the news that we need a terminal. It is running. We're a very significant airport here in Jefferson City. So here's the current airport building. And then I just have a few concept drawings. These were presented in December at Public Works. So just to kind of show you, this would be a two level proposed um, airport. And there's the ground level and the upper floor and then another concept drawing there, so we will be rebuilding the airport, which is definitely exciting. And then this is another upcoming project, Clark Avenue Roundabouts. You've probably heard about that. The governor did a, a kind of like a grant type project where he's investing in several projects around the state, and we're extremely fortunate that they chose a project right here in Jefferson City to invest in. So already we were working on the Clark Avenue Roundabout to at Dumplin to improve safety there. That's something that's actually been talked about for years with the connection between Lincoln University and uh, trying to increase um, access and safety for this entire area. And it was even pointed out as people come in from Wardsville and use this area that it's a significant safety issue and can be improved and has been talked about for years to be improved. So adding the additional roundabouts, uh, this grant project would allow us to do that. So it does actually call for an extra investment from the city and county. It would be about $650,000 extra each from the city and county. So we're having to sort of figure out how we're going to move forward with that and find the funding. But at the same time, when we have uh, cost share and partnerships involved, it makes it a lot more feasible and it allows a project that may not have been on the horizon for many, many years to come, to come to fruition early and, and increase uh, the, the area. So. 
that's an exciting project. Something else coming up in 2020 is the census to be counted. I see somebody brought uh, flyers already, and I have a couple of different flyers too. So this flyer talks about the complete count committee. It's Monday is our first committee meeting. You're welcome to join us. And the second flyer is if you know anyone that would want to be a census taker. So I'll pass those out as well if you want information about the census. The census is in April, and the city and county are kind of spearheading the um, informational, getting the word out about that. So you'll start to see a lot more after we have our, our initial complete count committee meetings about being counted and why it's important to be counted and how to be counted because in this census that's done every 10 years, it's the first time it can be done electronically. So, and also reminding people that nobody's gonna ask for their social security number or money or anything like that. So being aware of, of what it's going to be when April rolls around. So we're getting prepared to be counted. And although this is actually 2021, the uh, bicentennial, this is something that is definitely on the horizon. So we're working on that. I'm on the statewide commission for the bicentennial, co-chairing that. But uh, right here in, in Cole County we're, and in Jeff City, we're working on, on this. So you'll want to mark your calendars for August of 2021 because we're going to have a huge 200th birthday party for the state of Missouri. And the big party will center right here in Jefferson City. So you kind of imagine like Salute to America, like our big July 4th celebration. It would be like that, but on a statewide scale. So we're going to have that party here, but we're going to have, we're inviting the whole state to the birthday party, basically, right here in Jefferson City. So there will be events all over the state that same year. We will see the state fair is going to have the theme of Bicentennial. And, uh, every city and every county will hope do a Bicentennial event. But the big signature birthday party will be right here in Jeff City. So we are starting that now. Um, August 10th of 2021 is the actual okay. Bicentennial. That's actually a Tuesday, so if you really want to have a party, you probably, probably need to do that more on weekends. So we're, we're working the logistics of the day, so we should know that here very soon. Uh, but August 10th is the actual bicentennial date of 21. And just wrapping up, this is a, a chamber. This is a painting that I did for the chamber. I think they may still have. I don't know, still have any. We have a few. Just a few left, maybe. It was so, be signed by the mayor. Which could be signed, yes. So, uh, or take a selfie with it. It's, oh, it's hanging in your office. Oh, you have the other picture. You don't have this one. Oh, you have this one. Okay. Well, some of you actually have taken a selfie with some of yours already. So. What's the other one? You have the wrecking ball one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's a good one. Yeah, that's 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 a good one. I showed you the painting because one of my New Year's resolutions is to paint more. So uh, also do more yoga, right? And we all need to do something that makes us more grounded and happy and take better care of ourselves because if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of the city. So get more sleep, work on the mayor's blog, visit Minch from Germany, and we are, we set the date. So we're going for Oktoberfest. So if anybody wants to go to Minchburg in a partner city, it's really going to be fun. And... Oh, drink more water. So when you go Oktoberfest, they drink a lot of water. So you want to really get to practice that. Anyway, uh, engage with the USS Jefferson City more. We want to really connect with our sailors. Ride the Peddler's Jamboree. That's coming to Jeff City. If you haven't heard about it, I'm really excited. You get to ride your bike to Jeff City from, I'm not sure where they start, but it's pretty far. But then you can come to the prison. They're ending up here in Jeff City, and you can actually camp out at the prison. So that's why I have right with the Peddler's Jamboree and MSP Camping. Who wants to camp out with me at the prison? It's going to be cool. And then be counted. So here's my contact information. And then like everybody says, they want to weigh what their driver's license says. Well, I want to say what my thing says. Follow my blog. I don't want to really do my blog this time. So that's like my, you know, my thing that I want to say. I want to be able to actually do what my information sheet says I have because I haven't blogged probably in a couple of years. But... There's so much to share that the reason I say I want to blog is to get that out to the community and get information out. So uh, right now I mostly do share it though on social media and try to take pictures and selfies every single day so people know what's going on in Jefferson City. Because this is an awesome town and there's so many cool things happening. So uh, any questions for the mayor? Yes. Uh, could you address the financing on MSP redevelopment who tentatively to pay for what? Sure. So we have a lodging tax available. So that is what would be uh, used if there's a conference center that is associated with this development. 
So it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement of the redevelopment, but it is if there is a conference center, then we would use the lodging tax, which is a huge incentive, several million dollars, you know, over 13 million-ish, you know, that would be available. So that's a big, a big number of incentive to put, uh, put a conference center with the MSP redevelopment. There's also in infrastructure monies. There's a joint city county with the, our joint sales tax project that there's an economic growth and development and infrastructure that we would need the road, so we would work together with the city and county to build the road. And then a lot of it, most significantly, is going to be the private investment, the private developers investing their money. So this is definitely public-private partnership all the way. Any other questions? Is that really? Okay. Thank you so much for having me today.